Hi, my name is Rob Latour and I'd like to share with you a uh, freeware program that I've written called uh, Push to Run. So Push to Run is a program that runs on Windows uh, that allows you to issue a, a voice command uh, through a digital assistant like uh, Google Assistant or Amazon Alexa or your iPad or iPhone using Siri. Have that uh, with, with the use of some other services make uh, its way to your Windows computer where Push to Run will uh, listen for it, interpret it, and execute it on your computer. So um, this is just going to be kind of an overview uh, of the um, of the the program here. I'm gonna get it going. And what I won't do is uh, go through in detail how to set it up. That's covered off on the, on the web page. Uh, and but I will show you the web page uh, probably briefly through the throughout this. Uh, and also just a note, I will be using the various trigger words for uh, Siri, Alexa, and uh, your Google Assistant. So if you uh, want to mute those devices or move them away uh, so that uh, they don't hear this video and react to them, uh, that might be an idea. In any case, here's the, uh, here's the program, Push to Run, and, and you can get it from the website, pushtorun.com, uh, for a free download. And... Uh, Basically, this is the main window, and what it shows you is a list of uh, all the uh, um, kind of the commands. I call these cards that um, that you can use to uh, run, and you can add more. There's, there's uh, you, you're limited probably, but mostly by your imagination. Uh, but on the website, you can see links to uh, a whole bunch of shared cards, and I'll show you how to create them uh, as well as um, uh, as use them and edit them. Uh, but uh, maybe what I'll do is I'll just show you the first one here uh, using uh, an example. And this one would just kind of open up the calculator on my uh, on my computer. So uh, with that, I could say something like, uh, OK, Google, activate, open the calculator. Sure, activating the open the calculator. So there it is. It's, it's uh, started the calculator and it's actually done some typing. It's typed in one, two, three. Uh, and so let me just look at this card to see why that might be. Okay, so here's the uh, the push to run card, and again you can change it. But uh, the description is calculator. Uh, it's going to listen for any of those phrases. Um, you can actually type in star the calculator, and you wouldn't need the top three there, but uh, star being you know, kind of anything. Uh, but uh, it's going to listen for those three. Uh, it's going to open up the calculator program uh, found here. Uh, it's going to pass into it any parameters. So this one does, uh, the calculator doesn't have parameters that you can pass into it. And then it can actually uh, do some uh, typing. So uh, here it's going to wait for 99, 999 milliseconds and type one, two, three is what it's done. Uh, you can run it with administrative privileges or not. And you can open it a normal maximize, minimized, or hidden window. Uh, there's a help here as well. Uh, and uh, if you click that, uh, you'll be able to uh, see kind of the, the online help for the, for the application. And in terms of the keys to send, uh, there's quite a long list. Uh, you can send like shifts and cap locks and, um, you know, numbers and letters and special keys and all that sort of stuff. But anyways, let's just close that and bring the application back up. Also, when it's running, you'll find it here in, in the taskbar. So uh, that was the uh, kind of the, an example of using it with, um, with uh, my Google Assistant. Here I have another card. Let's look at it. Um, it's to empty the recycle bin. So here I've got something in my recycle bin. I just want to clear it out. Uh, in this case, I'm going to run this program here. Uh, if you do a Google search on it, it's a great utility NER command. It's not written by me, it's, but I've used it for years and years and years and years. It's a, it's a, an excellent utility as far as I'm concerned. And you can have it do many, many things, including passing a parameter into it to empty your recycle bin. Um, so in this case, I'm going to run it as a hidden window because I really don't need to see it running. I just need it to, to have it happen. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, run that on my um, using uh, an Alexa. So um, 
uh, Alexa, trigger, empty the recycle bin. Sending that to NIFT. Okay, so you may notice here it's saying it's doing it, it's completed it. It actually did it. Uh, Windows sometimes refresh, refreshes the uh, recycle bin, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, just move your mouse over, you'll see it's empty. So there was something in there and now it's gone. Uh, and so that's uh, that's been done with Alexa. So let me just show you this session log that I've been talking or I've talked about. And so you sorry, I am unable to fulfill your request on this device. All right, thank Please you. Please try again. Sorry, that's my Alexa. I'll just uh, kind of turn that off for a second. Okay, so um, so here you can see this is the program starting up. Uh, here's my open the calculator one, and here's my empty the recycle bin, and you can see um, how that's uh, coming in. Um, you can also uh, clear that if you want and copy to the clipboard if you want. Copy the contents of that to the clipboard if you want. So uh, let's look at another one. So um, this is another one here, and what this is going to do is allow me to play uh, a song that I might have on my computer someplace as an MP3 file. So uh, the other two, I kind of gave it a specific command, do kind of this, and then it, uh, you'll see this documented in the help. The way Alexa and uh, um, Google Assistant work, uh, you have to say specifically what you want to have done. With Siri, you have a little more flexibility and you can use uh, what's called kind of variable text represented by the dollar sign here. So I'm gonna be able to say play you know, a song that I might have on my uh, computer, and then it's going to use uh, this card here, and this again is documented in the help, and it relies on another great program called Everything that's uh, documented on, uh, again, not written by me. Uh, uh, I've used this for a long, long time as well. It's a terrific program. Um, the author is good with me, including it uh, in in my you know help and stuff like that. So that there's uh, a lot of uh, there's uh, some documentation there on how to do that. But it's going to look for an MP3 file based on the words that I say, and it's going to look in in this particular directory to find it. So uh, let me just give you an example of that. And to do that, I'll have to kind of sign on to my my iPad here. Um, it'll let me. All right. And I'll give a command. Siri, tell my computer to... What's the text? Play 99 red balloons. And there you see it, uh, it started to, to play that song. So um, Siri also works a little differently um, in that you have to say, uh, and this is explained in the help, you say, Siri, tell my computer to, and then you have to have a pause. And then what Siri does is then ask you, well, what is it that you want to do or what's the text? And you tell it. And then in the case I said, play 99 red balloons, and it played it. So um, you could also say, um, you know, open um, and then some file name like, uh, uh, you know, the budget database. And as long as the budget database was in the name of the file, uh, everything would find it and, and bring it up to you. Let me look in the session log just to show you one thing about that. So what um, it's going to do, it says 99 red balloons, everything matched two files. So there's actually two files on my uh, computer that have 99 red balloons on them. And um, I think one's the English and one's the German version. Uh, and so it, it's, it's picked, it picks the first one and plays the first one that it finds. All right. So let's just open this up. Um, let's just show you how to uh, create a new card. So to create a new card, one of yourself, uh, you can just click add and it'll bring up a, a blank one where you you know type all the the information just give it a description what you want to listen for um, what you want to open parameters all that sort of stuff uh, if you have a um, a shortcut to it could be a, um, a file it could be uh, like a, an excel file 
Uh, it could be the Word. This is a shortcut to uh, a program, the Word, Microsoft Word program itself. Um, all you need to do is take that shortcut and drag it over to where it says open and it'll pre-populate a bunch of stuff. So it knows you're dealing with Word, so open Word, start Word, run Word, and actually uh, finds it there. So you just click OK, and really that's all you do. Uh, by default, it's turned off. So um, you can just turn it on here. And uh, we can also run it by just right-clicking on it and uh, clicking Run, and then that'll open up Word. All right. There we go. Close that up. And uh, you can also um, run commands through the Windows command line if you're, or a batch file or a script file. So let me just show you that. I just say push to run. Um, uh, open. So that's kind of a, an overview of the, the kind of the workings of the, of the application. Um, there is, uh, by default, when you start it up, it, it runs in uh, kind of a regular application mode. Uh, you can switch it here to uh, run with administrative privileges. Um, and what that'll do is it'll stop the program and restart it with the uh, administrative privileges, which is something that uh, um, for those familiar with these things that uh, Windows requires sometimes to run special programs. Um, so there you can see it's running now with administrative privileges. It's kind of the, um, you know, it's sort of like clicking this thing here. Um, that's, that's all documented in the help and we can turn that off just by clicking that again to remove those privileges. All right. So that's going to just recycle the program. And there it is again. Um, there's a help, so you click on the help. Uh, this will bring you to the web page. Let's take a quick look at that. Uh, there's the web page. Uh, I'll probably be updating it to post uh, this video on it when I'm done. Uh, there's also, uh, let's go down here, look at the about. Uh, this is the help that we've seen before. Um, uh, this is a user form, so if you click on that, uh, th these are a variety of programs that uh, I've written uh, over time. Here's the push to run. So there's uh, general discussions there, and you can uh, um, you can um, log on to that forum, register under that forum, and and post questions there. If you have any questions, I prefer if you could post them to the the forum. That way, other people who might have the same question uh, can browse through them and and get their answers uh, a little more quickly. Back to the help here. Um, uh, the, there's license uh, button there. You can see uh, uh, kind of the terms of the license for them. It's all the all the like sub components of the program that the, that it uses, as well as some some other stuff that it uses here. But basically, it's uh, it's uh, uh, it's licensed under this um, uh, license agreement here, which basically says that uh, you're free to share and copy and use it uh, for any purpose you want, even uh, commercially. Uh, this donation here is not me, it's, uh, it's these guys here. Although there is, uh, there is a, uh, a button to donate to push to run here. Um, in terms of setting the, the program up on the web page, we'll just pop back there, there is a, there is a setup. Uh, and then this explains how to set it up and some of the other software that you might need uh, to use it. Um, and this is, if you click on any of these links here, it'll show you how to uh, use it with, say, an iPhone or iPad and Push Bullet or a Google Assistant uh, with uh, Dropbox. And you click that and it'll bring it to you, bring it to you and show you how, how to set that up. Uh, as well, there's some information about those services and uh, a few little notes that are, are worth uh, going through if you uh, if you choose to use one of uh, these options so abc abc so we'll look at the notes uh, specific to those uh, 
um, those usages. In any case, uh, that's the program in a nutshell. Uh, I hope it uh, proves to be of good use to you. I've really enjoyed uh, writing it, and uh, you know, I, the feedback I'm getting from from people is it's uh, in some cases really quite helpful. So I hope it's helpful to you, and uh, thank you for your time. Have a great day.